Hello and welcome to the new women's show and today we've got a very special guest. We have got with us a uh, Liverpool midfielder and Wales international, Kerry Holland. Kerry, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Thanks for coming on the show, really appreciate it. Uh, no first worries, first interview we've done on LFC Day Trippers with, with the women's team, so we're quite excited. I know, I'm honoured honored to be asked at the first one. <laughs> good, good, good. So for those who don't know, uh, Kerry's a uh, central midfielder, um, is it three, three goals in seven games? Uh, since you joined us in January, it's around that yeah, sort of something, yeah. something along those lines. Goal and goal in your debut, you can't really complain. Yeah, can't complain in the snow. Can't well, complain. So we'll never yeah, so... <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So, um, what sort of who's your sort of football inspiration who got you like into into football? Um, I mean, growing up, like in the women's game, I think Kelly Smith and Steph Horton were definitely like massive ones for me. Um, but honestly, I'd have to probably say my dad, um, in terms of like just. He got. He was the one that actually got me into football, and he took me down to the local boys' team, and um, really got me into the game. And then I think I kind of became more and more interested from there, and then got more and more into watching it. And then, obviously, growing up, I think um, there was a lot of. I watched a lot of Premier League football with my dad, um, so I think I kind of got a lot of inspiration from there. But um, as I got older, I think Steph Horton was a massive one for me, um, and also then, like lately, it's become kind of like I love love watching Sophie Ingle at Wales as well so I think she's unbelievable um so I think there's a few that kind of I've not really got like one single one if that makes sense I've kind of yeah that makes sense yeah ones from from different places if that makes sense yeah no remember Sophie because uh, she was a former Liverpool player as well she was a uh, yeah. really good she's been excellent for uh, Wales as well and yeah no, she's cool yeah, excellent excellent player uh so for the people who don't know uh, you signed for us in uh, January uh, from the University of Kansas. Um, so what inspired the move to America? Because uh, you were in America for three years. Um, yeah, I think America was an amazing experience. Um, the thing that actually inspired me to go, I think it was always an option in the back of my mind and I was never never that set on it, to be honest, until probably about a year before I went. Um, and I was at Manchester City at the time and kind of needed to make a decision whether I was going to try and stay here and make it professionally. Um, straight from the young ages or if I was going to go to America obviously there's an attraction with the education that comes with it um which was kind of a big thing for me I wanted to go and get my education and the fact that you can play football at the same time um was a bit of a no-brainer really and honestly just the experience of experiencing a new country and a new culture and meeting new people I think it was really good for me and my confidence and it's changed me a lot and made me a lot a lot more confident in myself and I think that's kind of put me in really good stead for when I've come home. Cool, cool. What do you study uh, at the university? Uh, exercise science, so kind of the oh. bog standard one for every sport people, I think, but there we are. All <laughs> right, fair enough. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so wh when you're in America, um, what was the biggest thing you missed from the UK? What can you what could you not get in America that you really missed? Um, it's a bit of an odd one, really. Um, my mum makes a really good roast dinner. Um, all right okay and I think that's probably it's one of my favorite meals and I think that was one thing I was always like when I came home as soon as I came home I was like we need we need to have a roast dinner because they just don't have anything kind of even along those lines um they have a Thanksgiving dinner like once a year which is kind of mm. to me it was just like a a different version of a Sunday dinner really and they only have it once a year and I've always grown up and we'd have a Sunday roast every Sunday kind of thing. So I think that was definitely something I missed. And then honestly, the chocolate as well. Um, I seem to have a big theme on the food thing that I missed, but um, <laughs> the chocolate is so much better here. And I'm a bit of a bit of a bit of a weakness for a chocolate bar. So I think that was something yeah. else. No, I'm the same with uh, chocolate and to be fair, Sunday dinners. They're two things that I, I couldn't live without. So now you're, you're back from America. Um, what can you not get in the UK that you could get in America that you miss? If, is there anything? Um, there's nothing in particular that you can't can't get here. I think in Kansas they did an unbelievable barbecue. Um, they're kind of known for their barbecue, and it's a little bit different to like what we would say is a barbecue here. Um, mm -hmm. but their barbecue was very very good. Um, so I think that's probably something that I miss. Even though you can still have it here, I think they just did it a little bit better probably. Um, so I think that's probably been my main one, and the weather actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, a bit like this summer, it's not, it's not been the best, has it? So, um, in terms of playing in America, um, stylistically, how is it much different to playing 
in England or, you know, is it pretty similar? Is it, you know, more physical in America or is it, you know, very, or is it style, stylistically quite similar? Yeah, it's different. The game is quite different out there, I think. Um, it's a lot more of a physical game. It's a lot more based on kind of athleticism, I would say. And I think it really benefited me. Um, I became a lot more athletic and I think that's kind of been one of my positive things that I've bought back here. Um, but I think, yeah, the pace of the game is a lot, a lot quicker out there, but it's not as technical. So it is a little bit different, I think. It's a bit more mm -hmm. of a direct game out there than... Perhaps I've come back and experienced more of a technical game in England. Um, so I think that would probably be the main thing. They are just massive on athleticism and, and running and power. And um, so it's kind of a bit like how I've come home, really. I feel like I've come home as a bit of kind of an American player. Um, <laughs> so, no, it's been, it's been good for me. I think it did me the world of good. Um, so that would probably be the main, the main difference. Cool. So when you made the decision to um, come back to the UK. Um, what inspired you to pick pick Liverpool win? Um, honestly, it was kind of like it was one of them where the you know they contacted me and it was just kind of something that I couldn't turn down. Um, growing up, my granddad was a massive, massive Liverpool fan, and um, I think to go have the opportunity to play play for his lifelong um, club, I think is a massive opportunity, and obviously it's. A, it's a massive club. There's no getting away from that. Um, and I think when the opportunity came, I just couldn't really turn it down. So I think it was just kind of one of them, really. Fair enough, fair enough. So uh, are you sort of high fan like settling in uh, to Liverpool? Has it all been smooth sailing? Uh, easy uh, enough? Yeah, no, I absolutely love it. Um, I love the city. I love the club. Um, I love the people at the club, I think. You know, we've got a really good set of, set of people um, and it is kind of like a family environment, I think that's something that's really kind of important and it's it's a really nice place to to call my job really um so yeah i can't complain at all no complaints whatsoever cool cool so in terms of the team like who who's probably your bestie in the team and who who, who do you sort of spend most time with um i spend you spend time with kind of a lot of people i think obviously leanne uh Kiernan has moved in and she's she's my new roommate so i spend a lot of time with her um and we get along really well um but honestly, everyone everyone gets along, and it's a very kind of friendly team. Um, so we all kind of are very sociable with each other. I would say. Cool, cool. Uh, so at all team, then, who would you say is the biggest joker in the team? Uh, you'd probably have to say Ash. Um, Ash, Ash Hudson. Ash Hudson. Ash Hudson. Yeah, I think she would probably get the crown for that one. Um, no doubt, she's always up to something and got that got like a bit of a smile on her face. So um, yeah, she's probably the joker. Cool, and. Um, Having gone through uh, pre-season, who would you say is the best trainer? Who's like the machine of the team, as you would say? Um, best trainer. To be fair, everyone is quite good. I do have to <laughs> say that before. <laughs> get, <laughs> don't take yourself off. Um, get that in there quickly. Um, <laughs> I'd probably say Raz, um, Rhiannon and Roberts. She's, cool. She's always working hard in training. Um, but honestly, everyone is... Everyone works hard. I think everyone knows if they don't bring it, then they'll be told quite quickly. So that's that's kind of a good good mentality to have. Cool. And who do you say has probably like the most skills, like tricks and things like that? Who, who's probably the best at that sort of stuff? Mel, no doubts. Um, Mel, uh, Mel, Mel Lowley. Lowley. Yeah. I've spent my life getting megged by her, so I think she <laughs> gets that one, no doubts. Cool, cool. So, <coughs> so in terms of, you know, last season, it was quite difficult in lockdown, you know, lockdown football is probably a, a lot more difficult without the crowds and all that. Um, so what, what you sort of learned from probably like uh, the first six months at the club uh, that we'll probably take into next season? Um, I think I've learned, I, I've been pleasantly surprised by the support that the club gets. And that's been kind of in terms of the fans and stuff like that. I think, you know, we have a really good following and the fans are very kind of, like to get to know the fans um so i think obviously that's really exciting when fans will be allowed back in the stadium and i think that i'm really excited about that because i've not experienced that and the girls say it's amazing when the fans come to the game and it makes such a difference and i think that's actually going to be a key key factor for us this season so i think probably the fans is going to be a main thing for me um but just in terms of what i've learned so far i think just learned a lot in terms of playing with really good players i think we've got a really good set of set of girls and 
I think my football's improving, so that's kind of been really positive to to see. Yeah, I mean, let's, when the fans are back, you know, uh, I wish I would say I, I could be like, I was that like, creative, I'm not, but the the songs they can th- think of for the players are, are brilliant. Um, it, do, it does sort of add, add a bit more, add something to the game, I do think that. So in terms of pre-season, obviously, you know, it's been a, I say a tough pre-season in terms of who, the opposition you've picked. You know, we've had like three three WSL teams. Uh, we had Celtic, and then we we've, we've played uh, Blackburn as well. So, how have you found pre-season? Has it gone as gone as planned? You know, is and I'm assuming playing the WSL side it is to get you sort of like up up to that speed to really hit the ground running. I, I would assume. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a really positive pre-season. I think obviously Matt coming in, um, <coughs> he's kind of bought his ideas, and I think. It's all starting to click together now, um, so that's been really positive to see. And I think obviously we've played some very, you know, good teams. Um, obviously, the Man United game sticks out for me, um, and we got a positive result from that. You know, it's a two-two draw, um, and again, probably we, we, you know, we could have won on a different day. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's been a positive preseason, and um, we've had some, you know, good games, some not so good games. Obviously, we lost the game against Blackburn, but. We took some things from the performance, and I think that's kind of what preseason is all about. And we've learned learned a lot from each game, and and that's kind of what the aim of each game was to just kind of learn a bit about ourselves and take it into the next game and improve. So I think we've done that, and you know our performance against Birmingham this weekend was a really positive one. So I think we're in a really good place for the first game on Sunday. Excellent, excellent. So in terms of being in terms of uh, being a professional footballer, what's the best and worst thing about preseason? I think the worst thing's the first session back, um, <laughs> just because no matter how much you do in the off season, I think it's always it's always the hardest thing. Um, so I'd probably say that. Um, and the best thing, I think you, I like personally for me, I really missed um, missed kind of training and seeing everybody every day. And I think you take that for granted until the off season comes of seeing seeing your friends every day. I think you know the teammates your teammates are you you know you're really good friends as well so I think you take for granted seeing them every day and when the off season comes you you don't see them every day so I think it's kind of a strange one and um, when you first come back and so I would say just just being in and around the team again is a really good a good thing excellent excellent cool so uh this Sunday then so first game of the season Prenton Park so we've got um uh, London City Lioness is uh two o'clock and um, obviously uh, people can still buy tickets for it you know so you know, coming to so come and cheer the team on. So, what we what what are we expecting uh, from London City Lions? I think last year we, uh, we got a one 0 win uh, at their ground, and then we had a two two draw uh, last game of the season. And so they look to have recruited well. They've, they've obviously recruited uh, Amy Rogers uh, from Liverpool. And so, what sort of challenges are we expecting from the Lionesses? Yeah, I think it'll be a really competitive game. Um... I think it'll be a really good first game for us as well. They they like to play football and I think it'll be a really kind of tough first game, but one that we're all really excited for. I think we'll prepare for it really well. And um, obviously they've recruited a lot of people in the off season. Um, so they've obviously strengthened their squad. So I think honestly, it'll be a really good game. And it's one that I'm really excited about because you can't beat a, a good first competitive game really of the season. No, definitely not. I mean, Speaking of like incoming, so this summer so we've had um, I think eight new players join us. I mean, how are the, how are the new players settling in? Yeah, really good. I think um, I think everyone's kind of you forget they're new now. I would say you know it feels like they've been here a long time. So um, the team's in a really good place. I think you know it's, we're we're in a really good place in terms of ready to just start the season. And I think everyone's really excited and on the same page of. You know, we want to get promotion this season and then that's the main target, obviously. So I think Matt's got everyone on board with that and I think it's just a really exciting time to be part of the club. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, obviously, that's what we want for Liverpool. We want to get back in WSL and compete, competing up there. In terms of a personal point of view, what's, what sort of your, have you got any sort of targets for this year in terms of performance, goals? Is there any, anything you want? What are your sort of targets personally? Or is it... A, or do you not really um, set them? I've not really personally set any targets yet, I'm going to be honest. Um, you put me on the spot a little bit there. Sorry, Matt. Sorry. <laughs> I, think, um, I think for me, honestly, I'm, I'm just anything at all to help the team get promoted. I think everyone I think everyone would have a similar an- answer to that because that's what we all want and there's no doubts about that. So I think anything that can help in terms of goals or 
just helping the team in any way possible um, to get as many wins as we can. And hopefully, you know, at the end of the season, we'll be at the top of the table and be in the WSL next season. Yeah, fingers crossed. That's what we're looking for. So uh, in terms of this Saturday, you've got the fans coming back. Uh, any sort of message for the fans on Sunday and, and for the rest of the season? Um, I think my only message would be that we just can't wait to have you back. And um, I think, you know, hopefully we can put in a good performance for you all. And I can't wait to see you at Frenton Park. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks so much, Kerry. So uh, so just before we go, um, uh, w- this is the LSE Day Trippers. So the only thing we'd like to add is we are still trying to raise money for uh, Sienna. So that is a uh, hashtag Sienna Steps. We are trying to raise £120,000 to get this young girl to America uh, for treatment for a form of cerebral palsy. So please, if you can, uh, please donate to that. But until then, uh, Kerry, thank you very much for coming out. We will, I, I will see you on Sunday at, at the match. And and guys, we will we'll be doing more LFC women's shows. But until then, take care. Thank you very much.